swing around here. I think this is heading back towards the center. I could be wrong, but I thought I saw a... thought I saw a sign. I'm going to turn back around because I think this white topping here, this white pavement, actually has a purpose. So let's go look at this sign for this white pavement. I think this is an experiment. Let's check it out. Okay. NOVT pod white topping. Okay. I'm not real sure what all that is, but looks like there's a QR code. So let's take a photo and then maybe we can figure this out. Okay, I looked it up and it looks like it is an experiment to see if they can strengthen the asphalt construction and also uh, do some resource savings. So there you have it. I'll be sure to include this link in the video description below. Okay, back on the road again, or the cycle path. Transit stop right there to our left. Nice little pedestrian bridge, pedestrian pathway on the right. Beautiful park area, green space. Such a beautiful, beautiful morning. Lots of folks out getting some exercise in. And looks like we're getting into another section of the white pavement. This is called the recycle pad. So this might be... And the reflecty pad. So this one might have reflection in it. Let's see what this next sign says. And the Ruckducty pad. Reducty, reflective, and recycled. I kind of do want lunch now. Let's see if someone, anyone will feed us. All right, cool. Here's a little uh, skate park. And skateboarders. You got some kids on little razors. All good fun. Pretty uh, major intersection here. You see for right turning cyclists, we're set up over here on the far right. If we were going straight through, we would be in that lane over there. This is definitely not, obviously, protected infrastructure. This is definitely just paint. So, for those that think that, oh, the Dutch system is just all protected and separated, it's not quite true. There's plenty that's just paint and colored asphalt. Okay, as I was saying before, I was so rudely interrupted by a dead battery. Here's a nice little transit area here. Separated staging area for people getting on to the bus. And again, it's just colored asphalt, a little bit of paint, relatively calm environment in terms of 
motor vehicles, but uh, definitely not best in class or best practice. Would love to see something more authentic. Some more houseboats in the canal. Is it a houseboat if it doesn't actually go anywhere? Is it just a floating house? I don't know. Inquiring minds want to know. Again, pretty standard Dutch roundabout without protection. I believe this is the one that we saw earlier. It is. So we've got the, the version up here with the modal filter in the middle. So it's a roundabout for bikes, but not for cars. Seen lots and lots of families. Taking this route. Maybe for good reason. But uh, there you go. Another example of how the Dutch systems, city to city, vary a lot. Some of the facilities are better than others. There's innovation happening all the time. for our bike light, and there it is. bit of protection and separation from the motor vehicle travel lane nothing super fancy but it works basically just a little bit of a buffer raised brick curb area a little bit of green up ahead nice facility right in front of the car dealership or a no And you noticed at that signal, the, the more prominent countdown light indicator letting us know that we were about to get our green. Another little brilliant thing that's not too difficult to do. That just makes life a little bit easier for people riding bikes.
And if you make life easier for people to ride a bike, what will happen? More people will ride a bike. Humans are so predictable. <laughs> a little young family out for a Sunday ride. Okay, looks like we do have ourselves another roundabout. This one, we do have a little bit of protection, but there's not that queuing area for the motor vehicles so that they are not blocking the flow, which is nice because it gives the drivers a little bit of an out. They're a little less aggressive when it comes to shooting across that gap. So, I'd love to see that design kind of tweaked a little bit, but given the space, they may not have the space. structure here and into the old historic core we go and watch our strut and the feet's stolen so trying to manage bike parking in the public realm here. One of the ways that uh, you try to manage having bikes literally parked everywhere is you create secure, free bike parking indoor, out of the elements. Looks like the one cafe that has outdoor seating in the sun is completely full. <laughs> Those little slivers of sun, pretty important. Well, folks, that's all she wrote for my very first time riding around Zwolle. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this four part series. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below and share it with a friend. And if you haven't done so already, I'd be honored to have you subscribe to the channel. Just click on that subscription button down below and ring the notifications bell. And have no fear, I was able to get a nice bite to eat and catch my train back to Delft. And I will be back with some more videos from this particular day, November 13th, 2022, uh, in a little fun ride that I did around the countryside in Delft. Uh, so until then, this is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health, and happiness. Cheers. And again, sending a huge thank you out to all my Active Towns ambassadors supporting the channel on Patreon, Buy Me a Coffee, YouTube Super Thanks, as well as making contributions to the nonprofit and purchasing things from the Active Towns store. Every little bit adds up and it's much appreciated. Thank you all so much.